And what's up, everybody? We're back with another episode of the Talking NASCAR Podcast. This is Talking NASCAR Podcast, episode number 92. And as promised, Hitmaster's back. Hello, I am back. That's right, it is me, Hitmaster, as I'm walking away. Because I'm trying to remember that I got some stuff at a certain place. We got a lot to talk about today. Um, Darlington is in the books. Uh, the NASCAR Cup playoffs are set. So we're going to go over um, how the drama unfolded at Darlington. But also we're going to go through the entire 16 drivers and preview the playoffs. And we're going to do a pick for a champion. All that jazz. The 2025 schedule was also unveiled for all three series. After a long time of just rumors, small announcements, and other speculations, we're going to go over all three series of schedules for 2025. There are some big changes to go over, so that should be very exciting. Um, i got a couple, i got like one silly season thing as well to go over. Um, if we have time, I'll give my thoughts on the NASCAR game that I finally got to try like many weeks ago now, NASCAR Rivals. But we might save that for the next episode. Don't know yet. But what we will do is at the end, we'll preview this weekend's action at Atlanta. So, should be good there. First, got to talk about Darlington. Um, I get to watch about the first couple stages of the Xfinity race, and it was a very chaotic first stage of the Xfinity race. On the first lap, Parker Retzlaff's car failed. Battery died or something. Um, he was out of the race after that. Joey Logano lost a motor a few laps later. Um, Riley Herbst and Al Anthony Alfredo both hit the wall, um, on different points that pretty much took them out of the race. Sam Mayer had a flat tire from the lead with a few laps to go in the first stage. Um, and then at the very last lap of stage one, Brandon Jones wrecked. So that was all stage one. That all happened in just the first stage of the race. It was only a few laps. After that, it did calm down. Kyle Weatherman Blew a tire and wrecked to start the second stage. Otherwise, there were no other problems through the second or through th most of the third stage. Um, until A.J. Allmendinger wrecked late, hitting the wall pretty hard uh, to set up an overtime restart, which uh, Christopher Bell would uh, uh, prevail in in the Joe Gibbs number 20 Xfinity car. Getting back-to-back -back wins for that car. Two different drivers, but same car in victory lane as Christopher Bell was able to take the victory in overtime so nothing huge changed for the xfinity playoff outlook they do have still have atlanta their playoff cutoff is still for three more weeks so we won't be talking about that for a little while um but with the with bell not being eligible for the playoffs nothing crazy changed for the xfinity series so that was xfinity the cup race was a little more chaotic um Stidden was not chaotic just for most of the day, though. Um, Martin Trex Jr. got loose and wrecked, took out Ryan Blaney on the third lap. That put his chances at the playoffs in jeopardy because of uh, points issues. Um, but there were no other... There were... After that restart, they went about a little over 300 laps without a caution for incident. The only cautions were the stage cautions. So, went quite a long time. But there was some crazy developments going on while that big long run was going on. Mostly, Tyler Reddick was pulling a 2004 Tony Stewart by apparently taking a dump in the car because he was sick and also throwing up. They attempted to give him medicine under a green flag pit stop, and they were these tiny little pills that he dropped in the car so he didn't actually get to take the medicine. And then they gave him a liquid medicine on the next pit stop. We didn't really hear much about that other remedies after that but it was pretty funny he was credit to him though putting on a master class of a run despite being like really ill and shitting himself in the car um i would have laughed if he would have won the race because that would be exactly like michael jordan and the uh flu game and he's on the same team as Michael Jordan. That would have been pretty funny. 
It did look like he was going to win there for a little bit. He ran. He was out at a really good race. Ran pretty well, all things considered. But his car was his car faded most of the night, as did a lot of drivers. Bubba Wallace started on pole. We took Bubba Wallace in fantasy this week. Started on pole. He led early laps. But as the night went on, his car also started to fade. Uh, a lot of other drivers started to fade, but others started to come up to the front. Notably, um, Chase Briscoe, uh, who was running really, really good all race long. We'll get to him in a little bit later. Um, so the 300 plus lap green flag run ends when Carson Hosovar takes a spin in the third stage, sets up a crazy restart that sees Chris Busher, another driver that was fighting to get into the playoffs on points. Um, he got into Todd Gilliland, spinning Todd Gilliland around on the restart, um, and also causing a little bit of damage to Busher's car, but thankfully nothing crazy. Um, and then Karsten Hosovar's night got even worse when he blew a tire and he hit the wall. So his day was over, which set up another restart that caused the big one. We saw a big one at Darlington. Yes, that is true. We saw it happen. A lot of drivers were collected. Ty Gibbs, also in the points hunt for the playoffs. William Byron, who was in a good shot to win. Bubba Wallace already talked about his positions trying to get into the playoffs. And, and many, many others were collected. Josh Berry, um, among others. It was a pretty pretty big wreck, all things considered. Um, that kind of shook everything up. But before that, we saw Chase Briscoe make an amazing move because everybody pitted and Ross Chastain stayed out on only eight lap old tires. Doesn't seem like that much. Eight laps? Come on, nothing. But this is Darlington we're talking about. So, of course, Ross Chastain decides uh, to try and block the whole field and... They went three wide with Chastain, Lar Kyle Larson, and then Chase Briscoe went all the way to the apron and made the the pass for what would end up being the win, spoiler alert, on the backstretch. Um, it was an incredible move. Uh, again, credit to Chase Briscoe putting on an amazing, amazing run. Um, but then that big one, big one brought up the caution again. Uh, Briscoe and a few other drivers decided not to pit, but one driver who did decide to pit was Kyle Busch, who was also in a must-win situation for the playoffs. He restarted back in ninth, and on the restart, it took him just one lap, or I think two laps, to go from ninth to second, and he was hard-charging Chase Briscoe, got right to Chase Briscoe's back bumper, and then his car stalled. He couldn't make a move after that. I think he wore out his tires or just the air was too wasn't good enough to get around him or whatnot. But Bush put on a hell of an effort, but it wasn't enough. Chase Briscoe pulls the upset win at the Southern 500, his second career win, and he's in the playoffs when he needed a win to get in. Let me just say this. If people don't know, oh, this is another Kyle Bush, you know, second place. No, this is his third straight second place. He finished second at Michigan. He finished second at Daytona. And he finished second at Darlington. This dude has three chances to make it into the playoffs. It's not his fault. It's his fucking team's fault. That they can't do shit. True. True. I mean, then again, Darlington wasn't nobody's fault. I mean, that was a perfect play, and he just didn't have. That was a great. That was a great finish because Chase Briscoe got loose a bunch of times. Kyle Busch was definitely putting on the pressure, but Briscoe just had the race of his life throughout the entire race for the most part. He was up in the top five. Kyle Larson led over three hundred laps, I think, or two hundred something laps. But Briscoe was the only one that could keep up with him. And then he finally got past Larson on that really nice move on the backstretch. And then Kyle Busch on much fresher tires catches all the way up to him from ninth. He was able to hold him off. Master class of an effort by Chase Briscoe. 100%. Great race for him. 100% um, earned it. Um, and Kyle Busch in his post-race interview, yeah, he was disappointed he didn't win the race. But he, was, he wasn't super mad. It wasn't like a typical Kyle Busch reaction that we would see to a race like that um because he got out he just got out raced and he has to and i think he respects that so but it's also important because this is again stored house racing's last season this is their first win of the season and they will have a car in the playoffs briscoe being the only one 
So that's kind of a little bit of a ceremonial moment, even though we'll talk about it in a little bit. Briscoe will probably be a first round exit, um, but maybe not. We'll see. But Briscoe's in the playoffs. How did that shake up? Who got in? Well, Martin Truex Jr. was able to get in despite only completing two laps in this race. Um, got the 15th spot. And Ty Gibbs gets the last spot. Um, he got he got caught up in that wreck, but was uh, the big one, but was able to survive and stay on the lead lap, which was good enough to uh, get his way on in points. He should be thankful that NASCAR penalized Austin Dillon because if they hadn't done that, he wouldn't be in the playoffs. Dillon would have gotten the spot in over him. So... You gotta be lucky for that. Uh, but the first two out were Chris Busher in 17th and Bubba Wallace in 18th. Um, Bob Busher would have gotten in the last spot had it not been for Briscoe's win. They were focusing on that all night. And, um, you know, Bubba Wallace, he, he had some good runs throughout the season, but I don't think he would have been that competitive on the playoffs. Chris Busher, on the other hand, should have won at least two races. And came just so close but not close enough kansas and the first darlington race should have been wins for him and they weren't it's tough but what are you gonna do what are you gonna do just imagine though like people <clears throat> people are saying like oh imagine if this happened or imagine this happened if you're a nascar fan imagine if kyle larson never won that Kansas race, where would Kyle Larson be? Where what would the regular season championship look like? What would the playoffs look like? But we'll never know because it didn't happen. Speaking of the regular season championship, uh, Tyler, Reddick, <laughs> Tyler Reddick wins it by a single point. It came down between him and Kyle Larson, and he got the done by a single point. Tyler Reddick shitting and throwing up in the car. Technically pulls off a shit and win. He te- he te- you said that. Technically, he pulls off a shit and win and gets the regular season title. Good job, Tyler Raddick. So, good stuff. Flu game. Flu game. Flu game. Um, but, yeah, that was Darlington. Uh, Chase Briscoe is in the New Year's Eve Spectacular again as well. This is going to be his second appearance. He made it in 2021. He's back again. He is the 20th driver to be locked in, um, which ties this is where you now matched last year's total for amount of drivers who got in at 20. Um, and I think there's some pretty legitimate chances for other drivers to get in. I don't think we're going to break the record of 27. We might get the 24, which is the second place spot, but I don't think we will. I think drivers that still have a chance to win that haven't yet, that are not in the New Year's Spectacular, Chris Buescher, uh Bubba Wallace, um, and maybe some upset winners like Atlanta or Talladega. I got the Roval, you know, Shane Van Gisbergen can get in. There's still a couple of road courses. So it, it's varies, but Chase Briscoe is in, um, to the race. So that's pretty cool. Um, pretty cool stuff there. So, but that was all I had for Darlington. Um, crazy race. Good race though. Really good race. Um, good run. I don't know if you got anything else to say, Hit Master. But. I've uh, I watched a little bit of the Darlington race, and, I, and there was some parts where on that, uh, you know, Tyler Reddick's throwing up and stuff. They were like talking about, oh, is Martin Truex still there? And what and <laughs> The funniest thing they said was, he may still be here, but I don't think he'll fit in the car, in the seat. So what, are you calling Martin Shurex fat or tall and Tyler Reddick tiny? Oh yeah, fuck yeah. Tyler Reddick's fucking (laughs) tiny as shit, dude. (laughs) But, uh, no, the race was... I didn't watch the full race. I probably watched a little bit of the second stage and then the first stage I watched completely um, just because I had work the next day and I didn't want to watch it. But it was decent. I was watching the highlights. I mean, it was decent. Mm -hmm. Kyle Busch should have still won it. But... Anyways, 
that's going to do it for Darlington. Put it in the books. We'll get to our playoff preview a little bit later on in the episode. Um, do got a couple other things to go over first. Um, I'll get over the one silly season thing first since it's really short, and then we'll go to the cups here to the schedule. Uh, it was announced a couple of days ago. Brandon Jones is going back to Joe Gibbs. As I remember, Brandon Jones used to drive for Gibbs up until 2022. Um, you might remember the moment where Ty Gibbs dumped him at Martinsville um, for a win he didn't need. Uh, so that was probably the biggest moment. But it is said that he is coming back next season. So cool stuff there. Um, yeah, so the 2025 schedule is out. This is huge. We already knew a lot. Of, we already knew a lot of the big. Uh, we already knew a lot of the big stuff. Bowman Gray is going to be the clash. We already knew that. They're going to Mexico. The Cup Series is going to Mexico, and the Xfinity Series is going back too. They used to race there, so that's kind of cool. But we're going to go over each. I'm going to go. I'm going to pull up the schedules real quick. Smiling for one reason, and if you guys know, because you guys work for the schedule, and what I've been saying on this podcast for a very, very long time, I'm so happy. All right, here we go. We'll start with the trucks. Hey, they got the kickoff race at Daytona on Valentine's Day. That's pretty cool for the truck series. Then they'll go to Atlanta. Then Las Vegas. And then Homestead, Martinsville, Bristol, and then read it and weep. That says it, baby. We're going back to Rockingham. Holy crap. Un The Rock is back. That is insane. I we knew it was coming because they've been working on the track. They've been hinting at it for a long time. The fact that we're getting it finally is just is just insane. Is it's just insane. I cannot believe we're gonna see a race there. It's gonna be so cool. I am super excited. Um, it's gonna be awesome. Uh, and what else do you want me to say? Pringleson and the crew go to Rockingham to watch a race. Perhaps. Subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Yeah, I'll open, <laughs> I'll open up a Patreon so that fans can turn their trip there. All right, then after that, they go to Tex Texas, Kansas, Texas, then the North Wilkesboro, Charlotte, Nashville. I think that's I don't know if they've been to Nashville. They're coming back to the Michigan. Trucks are. Um, Little spoiler, the Michigan race no longer in August. It is being moved back to June and only June. Thank fucking God. Maybe this will solve the rain problems. Highly doubt it. The rain was bad in June too, so I don't think it'll change, but maybe it will. Um, I personally prefer it in June because in June it's like summer's just starting, so it's kind of like a signifying of the beginning of summer. The oh, yeah. August race was always like the last big thing you did in summer before school started, so it's kind of nice it's coming back. Uh, but it also, yes, it does mean the Truck Series is coming back to Michigan for the first time since 2019, so that's pretty cool. Then Pocono, um, and then another new track, Lime Rock Speedway, Lime Rock Park. In Connecticut, this is a, I believe, a road course. Um, yeah, this is going to be a race in Connecticut, folks. Uh, that's something that they've really never done before. And, uh, yep, it's a, oh, it's got a five-star rating. Nice. <laughs> nice. I'm not looking it up. I think it's a road course. Yep. So this is it. This is a road. This is the uh, Lime Rock Park. It's a road course. Trucks are going to be there. It's pretty cool. Hmm. Another new track to uh, to race at. Interesting. And then Indianapolis. They get a fucking full month off, pretty much. God damn. Uh, the Indianapolis Raceway Park, Watkins Glen, Richmond, uh, Darlington is their first playoff race now. So no more Milwaukee. They went to Milwaukee for two years, and they are done with Milwaukee. 
very it's inter- fuck Milwaukee. Very interesting choice there. I mean, it was hinted that it was pretty well known that they weren't going to go back, but it's still an interesting choice. Why bring it back, but only for two years, you know? I mean, who's going to want to go to a place whose entire place is based on cheese? I don't know. And then Bristol, uh, New Hampshire, the Roval, Talladega, Martinsville, and then the championship race on Halloween night in Phoenix. So that is the truck series schedule. So nothing too crazy outside of Rockingham and Lime Rock Park. But two pretty big additions. No doubt about that. Um, now let's look at the Xfinity series schedule. Mm. So they'll kick their season off at Daytona, Atlanta. Then they go to Coda, Phoenix, Las Vegas, Homestead, Martinsville, Darlington, Bristol, and they also are going to Rockingham. Pretty cool stuff there. Talladega, Texas, Charlotte, Nashville, and then they're going to get, like I said, back to Mexico. They're going to Mexico as well, so that's going to be cool. Um, Pocono, Atlanta, the Chicago Street Course, Sonoma, Dover, Indy, Iowa, Watkins Glen, Daytona, and then Portland, which has been a first weekend of June race since it came back, is getting moved to the last weekend in August, so right before the playoffs. Could be interesting stuff there. And then Gateway is the cutoff race before the playoffs, which for the Xfinity Series will kick off at Bristol. Then they got Kansas, the Roval, Las Vegas, Talladega, Martinsville, and the championship race at Phoenix. So, again, the big changes there. Rockingham, Mexico, the Portland race getting moved. Nothing else too, too crazy there. I I think they moved the Portland race um, in spot for Michigan. Probably. Because there's no... Because Michigan's not on there, and I just now realized that since Michigan's not on there, I think that's why they moved Portland. And then the coveted cup schedule. They'll be doing the Clash, Bowman Gray, then Daytona, the Duels, and the Daytona 500. Then they got Atlanta, uh, Coda, Phoenix, Las Vegas, my Homestead, Martinsville, um, Darlington, Bristol, and then their own, the only off weekend during the season this year is Easter, which will take place after Bristol. Then they'll go to Talladega, Texas, Kansas, uh, North Wilkesboro for the All Star Race, the Coca Cola at Charlotte, Nashville got moved up a few, Nashville got moved up a few weeks, first race of June. Then Michigan. It's going to be fun to hopefully go back there. And then they go to Mexico City. And then Pocono. What a three-race What a three race stretch right there. You go to Michigan. Then you go to Mexico City. And then you go back up to Pocono. What the fuck? And then Atlanta in the middle of June. Uh, big things there is that this is going. To, there are going to be more night races this year on Saturdays. And this Atlanta race is going to be one of them. So that is pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> Chicago. Chicago Street Course followed up by another road course, Sonoma, back-to-back road course races. Dover in the middle of July. That won't be a bad idea at all. Indy, Iowa, Watkins Glen, and then Richmond down to just one date, and that will also be a Saturday night race. Daytona, and then Darlington. And then the cutoff race for the playoffs, ladies and gentlemen, for the Cup Series is Gateway. Why? Why? That should be interesting. And then Bristol, New Hampshire, Kansas, Roval, Vegas, Talladega. Martinsville. Wait, nope. 
Oh, fuck. No, Gateway's going to be the first race of the playoffs. Darlington's the cutoff. Some of these it says playoff races, and some of them it doesn't. But Gateway will be the first race of the playoffs, then Darlington, then in Bristol, obviously the night race, New Hampshire, Kansas, Roval, Vegas, Talladega, back as a cutoff race. Or not as back as a cutoff race for the playoffs, but Talladega is the third to last race on the schedule. That should be pretty interesting there. Then, of course, Martinsville and the championship race at Phoenix in November. So, obviously, the big cup schedule changes there being uh, Michigan getting moved, Mexico City, Bowman Gray, um, and Gateway getting moved. So, pretty interesting stuff there. Um... I think this uh, specifically towards this Rockingham test, I definitely think that if Rockingham is a success, which I do think it will be, especially having the, the trucks and the Xfinity series there, I think that'll be huge. If they get good fan turnout, if the product is good, I think the Cup Series could make it to return there in 2026. I would like to see that happen. I can't guarantee it will. But it would definitely be interesting. So I'm definitely... Very, very excited to see how that will go. Very excited. So, I don't know. What, you got any other thoughts on the schedule? Mexico City sucks. Sorry, let me rephrase that. Them going to Mexico City sucks. I'm sorry for saying that out loud. I feel bad for it. The first thing I said. But going to Mexico City is one of the most stupidest things I've ever thought of, especially with that schedule. Having to go, remember where Michigan is, guys. It's all the way at the very top of the United States. Having to go all the way from Michigan to Mexico City. Then going to Pocono, that's in Pennsylvania. If you're going to do that, do it like this. Michigan, Pocono, Texas, Mexico City. Boom, you save some time. That or make Pocono, right after Pocono, go to Atlanta. And then Texas. And then Mexico City. I think it's pretty clear. Yeah, that, um, it, should, it should be pretty clear that they don't care about the mileage rates at all. They just want to bet the races on the dates that they can allow for. You should know this by now. Well, a man can dream. True. 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 Very true. But that's the 2025 schedule. Um,. I mean, as far as race dates go, I'd love to go to Rockingham. I think that would be a lot of fun. But I'm probably just going to end up going back to Michigan in June, um, which is going to be fun. I'm excited. Haven't been to the June race since 2019 when it last happened and it got rain delayed, so postponed. So, hoping that doesn't happen this time. Please. Please. Let's just have, as you can tell, I'm upset too, so please just let us have one full race without rain. Mother Nature, I will do anything for you not to freaking rain one day. One day. You can do that. I will freaking do anything. <laughs> okay, well. Going off that topic, I think it's finally time for me to give my thoughts on NASCAR Rivals. I've had this fucking sheet made, ready to go for fucking almost a full hour. I can't hour. wait for you to. I can't wait for you to talk about it too, because I've played the game a lot. Um. Yeah, you can help me out here. Some of these explanations then. Um. So yeah, NASCAR Rivals, another NASCAR game. Played it on the Switch. So, I mean, it's not the, a direct game from the Heat line. It's not its massive line. Where. Let me my, just say this. My big I know question why is, they NASCAR. I think it's false advertising, what? first of all. Because it's supposed to be. It's called NASCAR Rivals. But where the fuck are the Rivals? 
there's no rivals. There's right. no like rivalry system. There's no thingy system. Like the Thunder. Yeah, to be game. honest. To be honest, that's the one thing I hated about that freaking game. But I think did you do career mode or did you just do racing? I just did quick races. I didn't do career. I did some of the match. I did some of the uh, lightning challenges or whatever they want to call them nowadays, but otherwise, how was it? Um, I think try career mode because I think career mode has rivals. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. I see how it is then. Oh, it ain't gonna be like NASCAR teammates where you where you just get to drive with your teammates and get to swap from car to car. I knew that they wouldn't be... I, I knew that these games have been regressing in technology, okay? I wasn't expecting anything super advanced like that, okay? Thankfully, I own NASCAR 06 if I want to go play that one, but... <laughs> I got some other notes, though. They took a lot from Heat. This just felt like another Heat game without, like, any Heat branding. It, like how how cheap can you get? How cheap can you get to just fucking do a control C, control V with some very minor editing and almost no additions? It doesn't. Like I'm surprised you know they're not funny? sued to the moon. That that came out when ignition was coming out. So when ignition came out. It didn't go on the Switch. Ignition didn't go on Switch. Rivals. And then NASCAR Rivals went on to the Switch. Which, again, like you said, all that they basically did was just control C. There you go. Here it is. <laughs> like, it looks the same. It feels the same. It controls the same. Everything looks the same. It's, it's the same UI. Everything. It feels like the fucking Bishop Sycamore people. They made a school. They realized they fucked up, so they didn't. So basically, they just rebranded the same damn thing with a different fucking name. That's everything that they like. What the fuck? But That's see, a, here's the thing, though. Are you for NASCAR Heat? Are you gonna get the next gen car? You don't have the next gen car in NASCAR Heat now, do you? No, and I don't care if it's in there or not. You could tell Ty is upset. <laughs> it just baffles me how fucking lazy some people can be to just do a fucking control C, control V bullshit. Uh, anyway, I digress. Let's just fucking move on, I guess. I thought the cars looked fine. Um,. The driver selection is pretty good. I mean, Matt Kenseth in the game for some reason doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Um, but otherwise, I mean, I thought that the paint scheme selection is what you would expect from a Heat game. The driver selection is, I think, above average from a Heat game. That's probably their best addition. If there's like five additions that they made to this game, all of them are strictly cosmetic except for this edition. So there you go. Um you know, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, there's nothing else really to say about it. Um, and then the only other thing, I mean, the, the, like I said, the racing is just the exact same. I thought, though, the game punished you a lot for taking a turn just a little too fast. I thought the cars drove very tight, and, like, the cars would, like, lose their shit if you just barely took a turn too fast. Like, you had to take a turn excessively slow just to not veer off veer into the wall or like spin out or anything like that and that just that just felt unfair felt very unfair to me oh yeah overall i mean pretty underwhelming game review but like it's just basically a repackaged heat and so if you play the heat games you basically played this one 
So I don't really have anything else to say because it's just heat. And you get you know what to expect from a heat game. You expect shitty music. You expect fucking shitty paint schemes. You expect the limited driver lineup, You which is not in this game. That's like the one thing that they fixed. You expect the courses to be bland. You expect everything to be bland. And you expect it to be cheap. And you know what? They took it even cheaper somehow. So... I'm going to give this game a 5 out of 10. I mean, it's playable. It's not the worst game in the world. But it's far from good. So. Woo. <laughs> That's NASCAR Rivals. Woo. I don't know if you got anything else to input. Hey, Master. Um, about NASCAR Rivals or anything? I guess just Before anything. Before we get to the picks. I just guess anything. I went to a track that Tyler went to. True. And I got some gear. Oh, did you um, know? So, real quick, I do want to say, um, I wish, I really do wish, that we would have gotten to 100, like episode 100, a little bit earlier because there's a modified race car there where someone can drive the car and someone can do the passenger seat. I suggested this to Tyler where he would drive the freaking modified. I would be in the passenger seat and I would have my phone just recording this and we could race around the Wasso Speedway. <laughs> It but, fun. guess what? A hundred bucks for five laps. No thank you. It's a price you gotta pay. What can I say? We'd be too fat to fit in the car anyways. So. Uh, hey. Um, but. I got this. A loss. Shit. <laughs> I got this. The Wasso Speedway seats match, because I said, fuck it, I'm not getting a flag that's green and white that looks like the stage flag. Mm. Fuck the stages. And then my dad came back and got me a hat. Peak. There's a Wasso Speedway on it. Peak. Um, when we first got there, I got some food. Me and my cheeseburgers, I got a cheeseburger. And some fries. The cheeseburger was 9 out of 10. Better than freaking Crystal Motor Speedway. I didn't have to go get my patty. It was already on it. Um, the fries, on the other hand, they need help with that fries. Because they tasted terrible. And I mean, like, terrible. Some of it was burnt to a crisp. Like, it was disgusting. Um, there was, wherever I can find that piece of paper, the cars that were there, I have a whole schedule right here from it. <laughs> like, I wanted to know what times they were doing it. They didn't get done until 1.30 a.m. That's what sucked. I didn't stay till that time because I went to bed at 10 because fuck that shit. I had to do stuff in the morning. Um, they had dwarf cars. Whatever the fuck those are. Uh, they had sport compacts. MSR lights, which basically if you've seen uh, sport cars, basically what they are. Um... They also have the national ones, which are the higher, higher ones. They had trucks and they had pure stocks. Um, I only liked the dwarf cars just because there was one particular car that was a Kyle Larson car, painted like the Hendrick cars car. <laughs> What's funny is this bitch came from tenth place. After losing only by that much 
in the heat. He went from 10th to 3rd in two fucking laps. I looked over at the person next to me who was wearing a Kyle Larson shirt. I said, are you sure Kyle Larson isn't driving in this race? Because that's something no other driver could do. Um, he won the race, by the way. Um, True. Peak. Maybe. Peak. Um, and then the announcer came on the thing and said, September 11th, get your tickets now. Eric Jones will be driving at a Wassel Speedway. I'm like, cool, Eric Jones driving at Owasso. Is that supposed to be cool to us? I... He's done nothing. He's done nothing in NASCAR. I don't care if he's from Michigan. Okay? Hey, he's won. Hey, he's won three races. Yeah, but what race has he won this year? None. But anyways, okay. uh, yeah, basically we went home around 1030 because the race was just, there was always wrecks. And then they had to clean it up and it took them about, for some reason, an hour to fucking clean up one spot. There was, there was a wreck of two people. They cleaned it up and then it took them a full hour. I counted it. I used my phone and I pushed timer. It took a whole hour for them to clean turns three and four. A little bit. Just a tiny bit. So the sun was already down when the features were coming. And I'm like, great. This is fun. But yeah, it was fun. I really like it. I give a Wasp Speedway. It's higher than a... Stolen is of course higher than Corgan Oil because Corgan Oil is dying right now. Um, but yeah, I give it eight out of ten. It was fun, and I have a I have a good feeling K and N and Wheel and Modifies are probably going to go there someday. Yeah, it's got nice facilities. I wouldn't be surprised. So yeah, it'd be cool. It'd be peak even. And now, it's All right. Time. All right. So before we preview in Atlanta, we got to talk about the playoff grid. I've got it pulled up here. Um, we're going to go all 16 drivers, kind of evaluate their chances to win this season. Um, and then at the end, I thought it'd be cool if me and Hitmaster both picked our, def- our guests for the champion out of the 16 drivers who made it. So... This is going to replace, I usually do a playoff predictions video for like the MLB, NFL, NHL, NBA. Uh, I fill out in March Madness bracket. I used to do NASCAR once too, but I've moved that to here over the last few years. And that's going to be kind of the same thing today. Um, so here we go. In Well, actually, there's a tie for 15th. One point below the cut line coming in. A tie between the only two drivers to make it in on points, Ty Gibbs and Martin Truex Jr. Two drivers who are in very different points in their career. Ty Gibbs, just his second full-time season in NASCAR, has not yet gotten his first win, though he did win the Open at uh, North Wilkesboro back in May. So he is in the New Year's Eve Spectacular for the first time, but that doesn't really mean anything in NASCAR sense, but... He's had a pretty good season, a lot more consistent, still kind of an idiot, but um, overall starting to pretty much mature. And, um, you know, he's only below the cut line because he didn't win a race. Um, he's been towards more of a mid-pack driver, higher mid-pack, I would say. And I think he could make a second round. I think he could. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a first-round exit, but I think he could make the second round. It just depends on how things go. And on the other hand... Martin Truex Jr. in his swan song season um, has had some very up and down runs. Also has not found victory lane this year, uh, but he will be in the New Year's Eve Spectacular off of being a past winner of the event um, regardless. But, I mean, his final season still looking for that last win, um, and it would be very, very special. Um, He's another driver where I can see where I can see him making the second round. 
though if he doesn't win a race, I don't see him going any farther than that. Um, he's just, he's been very inconsistent, especially late. Um, I mean, he had the engine failure at Richmond. He had the rack at Darlington last week. He racked at Daytona as well. So he's been definitely all over the place. And, um, it has not been a, he's definitely not on a good stretch coming. I think he even wrecked at Michigan as well. That's four straight weeks blowing an engine or getting into a crash. So, got to shape things up going into the playoffs, but definitely still has a very legitimate shot. Um, the other drivers, there's also, and then there's a three-way tie for 12th as well. The two drivers in that that fall below the cut line will be would be Harrison Burton and Chase Briscoe. Holy shit, we are talking about Harrison Burton in the playoffs. What world do we live in? Um... Um, and I said long ago in podcasts, Harrison Burton is going to give them their 100th win. And I wanted to say this last week, but I never got the chance to say it. I fucking told you so. <laughs> I told you so. Harrison Burton was going to get it. And he got it. Um, all three drivers are tied for the spot in the cut line. But Harrison Burton getting his first career win at Daytona to get into the playoffs. Um <laughs> I'm just going to say right now, though, the only track he has a legitimate shot to win at is Atlanta. If he doesn't win at Atlanta, you can count him out as a first-round exit in the playoffs. There's oh, yeah. no there's no way he's going to make it any farther than that. Um, so, kind of sucks, but, I mean, you're getting in the playoffs. He got the first win and the 100th for Wood Brothers, so it's already a successful season on that front. So, who knows? And then the other driver below the cut line is our most recent winner, Chase Briscoe, getting the walk-off win to get into the playoffs. He needed to win, and he did. Um, now, Chase Briscoe's had a pretty up-and-down season as well. He's going to be the lone SHR representative in the playoffs this year, a team that's just 10 races away from being done for good. Um, he is definitely in a position where he's had some good runs. You know, we saw his Darlington run. We've seen a few others where he's been pretty decent. But he's been kind of off of the radar for most of the season, especially at the beginning. And if he's going to have a good run, he needs to shape up. I can, I, I, he, he definitely has the talent to get into the second round on points. However, I can't see it happening with the equipment that he's got on him. He'll need to win. And he can definitely win a race. We've seen that he can win. His two wins now have come at Phoenix and Darlington, two very challenging tracks. Um, he can definitely do it, whether he will or not is to be determined, but I'm going to put him as a very likely first-round exit. Um, and then the first driver above the cut line to be a tiebreaker is Alex Bowman, sitting in 12th. Um, Bowman um, getting a, a breaking a long race winless streak at Chicago, at the Chicago Street Course, um, to get into the playoffs, though he, like Martin Trex Jr., has also kind of limped into the playoffs. There were a few, because there were a few times this season, including the Chicago race, along with a few others, where he, it definitely looked like he was finally starting to hit his stride. But last few weeks, like Martin Trex Jr., has not been able to do that. I don't. Um, he's been definitely the lowest of the Hendrick drivers this season. Um, and I don't see that really changing come playoff time. It could. I don't know. Like He's definitely got the speed and the talent to get into the second round. I definitely think he will. But unless he wins the race, I don't see him going any farther than that. And then in 11th, one point above the cut line, Daniel Suarez. Another driver who is on the bubble uh, coming in. Got his win, though, at a track that's in the playoffs. He got his win in Atlanta. Back in the second race of the season in that very iconic photo finish. Um, and he's had some good runs this season. Had that fire at Daytona, though. Didn't really show up to Darlington that much. But, um, you know, he's he's definitely... I think he'll definitely make the second round. He can very well do it. Um, he's just got to put together some consistent runs. Trackhouse racing this year overall on a downhill, uh, more down year. Compared to last year, Ross Chastain missed the playoffs, didn't get a win. Uh, Suarez has been pretty inconsistent, but is in via his victory. So um, so it should be interesting to see what he can do in the playoffs. And then somehow, 
Above the cut line in 10th is Austin Sindrick, the winner at Gateway back in the playoffs, first time since 2022. The fact that this guy is starting the playoffs above the cut line is insane. He has had a pretty lackluster season, um, but he's been kind of hitting his stride lately as well. Um, and is coming off a pretty decent run at Daytona. Darlington was okay for him as well. Not too terrible. Um, do I think he's going to make it? No, I don't think he is. I think I think Gibbs and Truex can both pass him. Um, I think Briscoe could even pass him. I have, so hey, I think it, yeah, he's going to need he's going to need a little bit of a luck to make it far. But then his Hendrick teammate above him in ninth, Joey Logano. Both drivers tied for ninth, actually. Um, Joey Logano. His Hendrick teammate. No, a Penske teammate. I said teammate. The teammate. You said Hendrick teammate. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. All right, whoever's editing this, clip that. Nobody edits it. Nobody sure edits it. it. All right, fine. Somebody that's watching this, clip that and then send it to him. Okay, I want you to send it to him. True. And say Gary told him so. Anyways, Joey Logano in ninth. Um, it's been a kind of a down year for him as well. He's only in the playoffs because of his really fucking lucky win at Nashville where Paul Wolf put on one of the most insane fuel strategies possible. But, again, he's a solid driver. He's had a solid season compared to other drivers, but as compared to his level, not very much. Though he can definitely he can definitely pull off the win. He can definitely get a couple wins in the playoffs. He can make a deep run. I can very well see him going to the round of eight. But he's going to need to kind of step it up a little bit. He's been up and down. Uh, this season. Hope he gets eliminated the first round. That would be based. But I, I have to be realistic here. In eighth, only three points above the cut line is another Ford driver, Brad Keselowski, um, who finally, finally broke his massive losing streak and won at Darlington back in May. And he's had another really, really good season. Really solid season. Very consistent season. He's been up front contending for the win a lot. He had a very good solid shot to win Daytona a couple of weeks ago until he got a restart violation. Um, but, I mean, still finished in the top 10 there. Got a top 5 at Michigan. Darlington was okay. Um, so he's definitely sitting in a pretty good position going into the playoffs. But, again, it's a three-point cut. It's a three-point buffer going in. So he definitely does need to pick up some good consistent runs and try and win some races. Um which I think he can do. He's still got a lot of potential in him, even though he's in the later part of his career. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what he can do. Uh, in seventh, nine points above the cut line, fittingly for Chase Elliott, uh, the number nine. Um, 2020 champion, he's back in the playoffs this year after missing last year's playoffs with the win he picked up at Texas in the spring. Chase Elliott's also been a driver who's had some up and down runs this season. I still feel like he's about on the same level of competitiveness that he was in 2023. He just won a race. And he's also, you know, but he's put on some solid runs. He definitely, he went on that long streak of top five finishes. But over the last few weeks, it's starting to kind of fall off. But he's been holding steady. And I definitely think he can make a deep run in the playoffs with that consistency. I don't think he has championship winning consistency or power right now as it stands. But when it comes down to the final four, if the right other three drivers are in his way, I think he could do it. Is it likely? No, I don't think it is. But could be. Who knows? Then a number, that's sixth position, 10 points above the cut line going in is Denny Hamlin who was a very big contender for the um, regular season championship until Toyota fucked him over by dismantling one of his engines and giving him a penalty. But he still rolls in in sixth, and Denny Hamlin has had a pretty strong season. Um, but he's also been in a lot of wrecks. He's won, I think, three or four races this season, but he's also wrecked a bunch. He wrecked at Daytona. Darlington was a pretty lackluster race for him for the most part. He had some speed. Um, definitely wasn't terrible, but 
Um, still, I think, has a lot of work to do. Denny Hamlin, I think, will be a driver that could very well contend for the championship come Phoenix. He'll definitely make it the round of eight unless there's a very catastrophic issue, which could happen. Don't think it will. Um, but he's another driver who's getting up there in his time in his career. Fun fact, I had a dream last night that Denny Hamlin said he was going to retire after the 2025 season due to contract. That would be my best. That would be the best day ever. That would be funny. Best Albert. I predicted that, but we'll see. Uh, in fifth, 13 points above the cut line, and also the highest sitting Ford driver is Ryan Blaney, the defending champion, who has definitely had some problems with the um, championship hangover. Um, it took him a long time to get his first win. Um, he's had some chances, though. He ran out of gas coming to the final lap at Gateway. He finally did win at Iowa, but he's had some other races where he could have gotten it done and it just hasn't. But he's been pretty consistent still this season, coming off of that really bad run at Darlington where, again, he only completed two laps and finished dead last and also took a really hard hit, by the way. Doesn't seem like that really is going to affect him going forward, but it was feared that he possibly had broke his hand, which would have been bad because we're coming up to Atlanta, Watkins Glen, and Bristol. And you don't want a broken hand for those three tracks. So... Um, but he's still sitting in a pretty good position. His chance at defending his championship is still pretty likely, though I do I don't think with the way he's been running lately, he should have he should be in a position to do it, but possibly. Possibly. Um in number at the fourth position, seventeen points above the cut line, is William Byron. Um the Daytona five hundred champion. I don't know. I don't really like William Byron, personally. I mean, he's just kind of meh. I don't know. He's okay. He's had a strong season, though. Um, was definitely a huge contender for the regular season title early on, but kind of mellowed off as the season continued. But he's definitely still been competitive and um, is definitely a huge threat for the playoffs. Definitely a huge threat. And then in third... The regular season champion, I will digress, this is a lineup without the playoff points put in it. So Tyler Reddick, the regular season champion, currently sits third, 23 points above the cut line. Though that will change when the playoff points are inputted. Um, and Reddick has had a very, very sleeper season. Talked about the drivers that are going to have been trying to compete for the regular season championship. Denny Hamblin, William Byron, Kyle Larson... But then Tyler Reddick steals it out of all those drivers. Didn't really make, didn't really like see that coming at all. But he had a pretty strong season. Got a good win at Talladega. Um, won at Michigan too. It's cool getting to see him win for the first time at Michigan uh, a few weeks ago. And he's definitely got the power to make a final a, a final four run. I definitely think he will. Whether he will win the championship, I don't know. But he's definitely got the the talent and the premise to do that for sure. And then the highest seeded Toyota, 27 points above the cut line, is Christopher Bell. Um, another driver that I think has flown up under a lot of people's radars this season as a contender to get the championship. He had that heartbreaking uh, race at Phoenix um, where he blew a tire early on in that race and wrecked. Um, trying to avenge that, I definitely think he can. And he's definitely got a good shot to win. He's put on some solid runs this season. Won a lot of races. I think it could be his time. Very well could be. But I would be stupid if I didn't think the front runner for the 2024 champion was our number one driver. 35 points above the cut line. That being Kyle Larson. This guy, holy shit, can win pretty much anything. And it's scary to think that he could win pretty much anything. Now, it's controversial that he's in the playoffs to begin with because of not racing at all in the Coke 600, which, and they had to give him a special waiver for that. But he's won five races this season, including an Indy, including when the NASCAR went to Indy, um, which was kind of cool. Controversially, again, you know. Um, but he's coming off a really good run at Darlington. He led 230-something laps and finished third. And he's really good at pretty much any track. 
So, except for the super speedways. Still hasn't won a super speedway race. Kind of shows how much of a luck-based track those are. But I think he's got enough of a points buffer and a points cushion to get by Atlanta and definitely Talladega. He'll be in the Final Four. I don't see how he isn't unless there's a huge catastrophic Kevin Harvick level collapse. But we'll see. We'll see. So, but that's it, folks. That's your 16 driver playoff field going into the playoffs. It's pretty cool. I don't know if you got any other inputs, hey Master, any of the drivers. I don't know who you who you're rooting for or anything. Well, I want Chase Elliott. Really, I do. I'm going to cheer for him, and you know, hopefully he wins. Do I think he's going to win? No. Um. I'm going to go on a limb here, and I'm just going to say Ryan Blaney is going to go back to that. I just think that maybe he's saving his good cars for playoff tracks. And, you know, now that he's got that win, now he's going to save the – now the good cars are going to come out, and he's going to race great. So I'm going to go with Blaney to win the championship. That's definitely possible. Um, I think my championship pick is going to be Tyler Reddick. Here's why. Sleeper driver. Calm driver. Um, got a lot of consistency in him. He's got the most buffer for the playoffs. And I don't know. I just feel like it's his time to win. I just feel like it is. So... Maybe it's just because I saw him win at Michigan, so now I have to root for him. I don't know. However, I don't think any driver that I've seen win at Michigan has then gone on to win the championship. Let me think. No, 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 no. 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 Nope. No, wait. No. Nope. Yep. Never seen, never, nope. Never happened. So. Maybe. Yeah, but then again. Okay, I can't pick Tyler you, back then. Fuck. Who am I going to pick then? I'm gonna pick I mean, then again, you've never, you've never seen a Michigan native win at Michigan. So, I mean. True. I'm gonna go. I'm actually gonna go Christopher Bell then, just for that reason alone. Another sleeper driver though. Same reasonings. Just that I haven't. They didn't win in Michigan, so don't have him cursed. Watch he wins the championship. That would be funny. That would be. That would actually be really funny. But I don't think it'll happen. But anyway, that's your 16 driver playoff. So. It's going to be an interesting playoff schedule. we got Atlanta, Watkins Glen, Bristol, um, Kansas, Talladega, the Roval, Las Vegas, Homestead, Martinsville, and Phoenix. That is a very wide variety of tracks. Two super speedways, two road courses, two short tracks. Um, and then you throw in like the cookie cutter tracks, Kansas, Las Vegas, Homestead, and then, of course, Phoenix, the championship. So... Lots of potential for some crazy upsets. Lots of potential for some good battles, some good action down the stretch. Um, so it should be a lot of fun. And we're going to be here all 10 weeks throughout the ride. And that starts at Atlanta, baby. Um, taking off the playoffs. A super speedway race. Atlanta's going to be chaotic. It's, it, it just is. We know it's going to be chaotic. It's going to be kind of one of those crapshoot races. Um, it's going to be the one chance for a lot of drivers who try are going to try to win to get into the next round to spoil the party. Harrison Burton, Chase Briscoe, even Ty Gibbs, Austin Sendrick. Those drivers are, are going to be really fighting hard. But also, it's going to maybe shake up some chances for other drivers. You know, drivers who have big buffers might have bad runs that will kick off some other problems later down the line, and they might not make it. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens, but alas, it should be fun. But first, 
let's pick our Xfinity Series winners. I think it's just Xfinity and Cup this weekend. Yes. Yep, just Xfinity and Cup this weekend. Who do we think is going to win the Xfinity race? Josh Berry. True. I'm going to pick Sam Mayer because I don't know any other ones <laughs> off the top of my head. Plus, he had a really good run going at Darlington, and then he blew the tire, and he lost like two laps, and then wasn't competitive after that, so I feel like it'd be a redemption race for him. But then, it's time for our cup predictions via the Gyps. So, um, last week, Tyler won again. Um... He picked Brad Keselowski. I had Alex Bowman. Um, Brad Keselowski finished higher than Alex Bowman. So I picked first since I was the loser. Um, I, I already looking at this. I picked this way earlier in the day. Already looking at this still. I don't like it. Here's my pick. Um. Ooh. Now you're a pick. Um, from uh, Dawsonville, Georgia. Yeah, baby. Woo, yeah, baby. So, just imagine. Champion about to lose his ride. But again, it's a it's a this is a this is a super speedway, so you really have an equal chance between those two drivers. But you have a driver that's in the playoffs. True. And who won at Atlanta. True. Unlike Josh Berry, who isn't either one of those. Yeah. Well, anyways, guys, that was a long episode, but we got a lot done. That's going to do it for this episode, though. Um, next week, we will recap the craziness at Atlanta, preview Watkins Glen, and have some other fun, do some other fun stuff, which I don't know who that will be yet, but we'll figure it out. Anyways, guys, though, that's going to do it for this episode of the Talking NASCAR Podcast. If you want to be a guest on the Talking NASCAR Podcast, all you have to do is join the Pringles Linden Company Discord. Links in the description down below. Request to talk in NASCAR role from both me or him master, and we'll work out a time to get you on and talk some NASCAR. But anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, what are your playoff predictions? We want to know in the comment section down below. And otherwise, it's going to do it for this video. Stay tuned for much more amazing content from both me and him master. And until next time, see you guys later. Goodbye.